smaller molecules, smaller particles to be digested into tiny molecules and to be digested by the intestines, intestinal tract, uh, the bacteria in the intestinal tract to be absorbed. So we chew and then our first uh, digestive fluids enter the food from the salivary glands. And guess what? The major product is bacteria. We have more bacteria than dogs and cats. So don't bite anybody. <laughs> we have the Tylen enzyme in there, which only the horse has, and that digests carbohydrates. But it is only enough to digest about 5% of all the food consumption is carbohydrate. First clue, how much carbohydrate we should be eating. 5% of the diet, no more. Okay. Then the food goes down the throat, down the esophagus, and it hits its first station, the stomach. Now the stomach is the most resilient tissue in the world besides bone. But the stomach forms hydrochloric acid, which dissolves bone. So high, the stomach is more resilient than bone, and as resilient as hair because the hydrochloric acid doesn't break down hair. That's why you see in cats and dogs, hairballs comes out, won't digest hair. Okay, So the stomach lining is as resilient as hair creates hydrochloric acid that can dissolve bone, cartilage, and everything else except for hair and itself. It has a mucus lining that protects itself from the inundation of too much gaseous activity and byproducts from the gases produced when the hydrochloric acid enters the food. Also, if you're detoxing from the stomach, dumping poisons from your blood or neurological fluids into your stomach, it doesn't penetrate the intestine, the stomach wall and cause more damage. It will dump from the stomach into, uh, from the stomach lining into the stomach and not be able to move back. It's like a sphincter valve, the mucus lining. In there, there's mainly hydrochloric acid. There may be a little campylobacter and some other bacteria, but they don't thrive very well, except that it is entered in the salivary glands, survive the hydrochloric acid. So there's not a lot of bacteria in the stomach comparatively to what's in the intestines. Now, in the stomach, the first compartment of the stomach, the first part compartment of the stomach is where the hydrochloric acid is secreted and dumped into the food. So it makes the large chunks of like meat that you eat, will dissolve them into smaller particles so the bacteria can infiltrate and eat. In the second part, the lower part in the duodenum, is where bile enters the stomach. Bile is created by the liver, held in the gallbladder, and dumped into the stomach to digest fat. To take, the hydrochloric acid works on proteins and the bile works on fat. It takes those molecules of fat and breaks them down into smaller molecules so bacteria can feed on those, break those down. So then the food passes into the small intestines. We have around 60,000 groups uh, all involving only about three or four families of bacteria that feed on the food you eat. That is how we eat. We only 90% uh, of digestion is bacterial. We have 150 bacterial genes to every one human gene. We are not even a half a percent human. We are bacteria. So the whole concept and the myth that bacteria is our enemy and creates disease is the myth of the pharmaceutical and medical department and it is easily proven that it is wrong, false, and they get people to thrive on medications, not thrive, to subsist and get worse on medications rather than getting well. Again, they make money, you get sick, they're happy. 
So that bacteria, picture it this way. You've got these organisms that eat the food that you eat, their fecal matter, their urine, their perspiration is your food. Sure shoots the hell out of the pharmaceuticals bacteria theory about washing your hands with poisonous chemicals after you've gone to the toilet and touched yourself. <laughs> How many animals do you go around licking each other's butts? <laughs> their anuses, and getting it in there and cleaning it out. They want the bacteria. We feed them awfully. We feed them processed foods. They need bacteria, so they're getting it where they can. They're licking themselves many times daily to get the bacteria that they lack because of the processed chemical damaged food. Think about that. Why aren't they dying? They're eating toxic E. coli, aren't they? Of course not. E. coli is not toxic. E. coli is a form of bacteria in the intestines that breaks down harder tissue. It's a good thing. And then, of course, your uh, doctors who are more scientific, and there are more of them, and they can't keep the wool over everybody's eyes, so they come up with the E. coli 157H7. That's now the bad guy. When it was all E. coli before. And this 157H7 doesn't occur in nature. It's created in a laboratory and put in our environment and told that that is our problem. To keep the bacteria theory going, keep medicine and keep you terrorized and thinking that something, all these little microbes are eating up the body. They're making girly men out of everybody, right? The Schwarzenegger phrase. You can't have a more girly man than Schwarzenegger who's afraid of bacteria. Think about that. Think of all of the licking of anuses and all the... You're sick. You have pus. Things are coming out of you and your dog or your cat will come over and lick you to clean it. They're putting their bacteria on it to help you and removing the toxic stuff that's coming out. And most of that fluid that's coming out, that white stuff, those are white blood cells. What's ooky and bad about white blood cells? They're your protection. They eat dead tissue. In the blood, the only place where white blood cells are supposed to exist is in the blood. They eat the dead red blood cells so they don't accumulate in the blood. That is their job. They're phagocytes. Phago means to eat. They are eaters. They are like sharks of dead red, dead red blood cells. They eat the contamination, the waste, so the blood stays clean. So when you see pus, 90 to 90, 95 to 98 percent of that is white blood cells, and the rest is contamination. It takes a lot of your body's resources to deal with a little industrial contamination, toxic substance, could take 2,000 white blood cells to harness and control two, three molecules of mercury. That's a great resource for two or three molecules of mercury, which are infinitesimally, infinitesimally smaller than one white blood cell. But the white blood cells all have to, maybe one or two or three eat it, if it's three of them, then all the others have to surround it because that white blood cell is going to start blowing up and disintegrating. And then they have to eat that to keep the contamination down. So the only way you can prevent disease and dastardly experiences is by removing yourself from industrial chemicals in the environment, in your food, and most importantly, in your food because you're consuming them every day. So the intestines, now you'll still have about 10% if you have the good environment. You'll have only 10% of the intestinal activity will be digestive juices that you have to form. And that's more hydrochloric acid and the conveyance of more bile from the gallbladder to the intestines to break down the fats. Hydrochloric acid breaks down the protein. The bacteria, remember, consumes it. Their waste is our food. And whether the bacteria are eating blueberries or milk, 
Their waste is always the color of milk. So when that's absorbed into the intestines, it's called lacteal. The system that collects it is the lacteal system. It's a web network like, you know, a very complex, intricate spider web. And it connects to the intestines, and all that fluid, that milk fluid is absorbed. It's transferred, transported in the lacteal system to the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system bacteria breaks it down further into a translucent substance, slightly milkish translucent substance that feeds every cell in the body except for the red and white blood cells. Every cell in the body. That's the way it's supposed to work. Then the food moves down into the bowel and the same thing occurs. However, the bacteria in the colon are of different family and different nature than those in the small intestines. That's why they're separated. Now, the, the E. coli and other bacteria in the colon, they break down the food into the finite molecules that feed the brain and the, and the nervous system. So if you have somebody in the family, a child or whatever, who doesn't have good mental function, is on a good diet, they do not have the bacteria in the colon. You may have to take some raw butter and raw cream and raw coconut uh, cream and infuse that into their colon so they'll get fresh, whole fats to be able to break down and feed and protect their brain and nervous systems. I help many people, many families with autistic children. Their children are no longer autistic. Or those that have just, like, oh, I just got a, a note from a woman in England who had a severely autistic child. And she says, almost all of his autism in two years has disappeared. If you know what to feed the body, how it works, you can correct anything. The body will heal itself, even if it's something that's happened from a very young age. 